Did you know there's a virus quietly circulating every year that can cause serious respiratory illnesses worldwide, especially in children and the elderly? Meet human metanumavirus, HMPV. Let's uncover how it spreads, who's at risk, and how to stay protected. Number 1. What is human metanumavirus, HMPV? Human metanumavirus, HMPV, is a virus that primarily causes respiratory infections. It belongs to the family Paramyxaviridae and is closely related to the respiratory syncytial virus, RSV. It was first identified in 2001 but is thought to have been circulating in humans for several decades. Number 2. Who is most at risk of HMPV infection? Individuals most at risk of HMPV infection include infants and young children, older adults, especially those with underlying health conditions, immunocompromised individuals, and people with chronic respiratory or cardiovascular diseases. These groups are more likely to develop severe respiratory symptoms or complications. Number 3. What is the source of HMPV? The exact source of HMPV is not fully known, but it is believed to have originated from birds, as it is closely related to avian metanumavirus, AMPV. It likely crossed species to infect humans several decades ago. HMPV is now a human-adapted virus and spreads primarily through person-to-person -person transmission. Number 4. How is HMPV transmitted? HMPV is transmitted through respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes. Direct contact with a virus-infected person or touching contaminated surfaces followed by touching your face, eyes, nose, or mouth, can also facilitate virus transmission. Being in close contact with others in crowded places significantly increases the risk of viral transmission. Number 5. What are the symptoms of HMPV infection? Symptoms of HMPV infection include cough, nasal congestion, fever, sore throat, and shortness of breath. In severe cases, it can cause wheezing, bronchiolitis, pneumonia or acute respiratory distress syndrome ARDS. Especially in high-risk individuals like young children and the elderly. Number 6. How is HMPV diagnosed? HMPV is diagnosed primarily using molecular tests like reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction RT-PCR, to detect the viral RNA. Rapid antigen tests may be used and less commonly, viral cultures may also be used. Number 7. Is there a treatment for HMPV infection? There is no specific antiviral treatment for HMPV. Management focuses on relieving symptoms, including rest, hydration, and antipyretics for fever. Severe cases may require oxygen therapy or hospitalization for supportive care, particularly in high-risk individuals. Number 8. Is there any vaccine for HMPV? Currently, there is no vaccine available for HMPV. Research is ongoing to develop a vaccine for HMPV. Number 9. Can HMPV infections be prevented? To prevent HMPV infections, practice good hand hygiene, avoid close contact with sick individuals, disinfect frequently touched surfaces, and cover your mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing. In high-risk settings, wearing masks and maintaining physical distance can also help reduce transmission. Number 10. Is HMPV seasonal? Yes, HMPV infections typically occur during late winter and early spring, similar to other respiratory viruses like influenza. Number 11. Can someone get reinfected with HMPV? Yes, reinfections can occur, especially since immunity to HMPV is not long-lasting. However, subsequent infections are often milder. Number 12. Are there any complications associated with HMPV? Most cases are mild, but severe complications like bronchiolitis and pneumonia are more common in infants, older adults, and immunocompromised individuals. Exacerbation of asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, and secondary bacterial infections are potential complications which may occur due to HMPV infection. Number 13. How serious is HMPV infection in children? In children, HMPV is a leading cause of lower respiratory tract infections. While most cases are mild, severe infections can require hospitalization, particularly in infants or those with underlying health issues. That's all for today's video on human metanumavirus. We hope you found this information helpful and informative. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Stay safe, stay informed, and we'll see you in the next video.